guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me on this brand new fleece to FO project. It is a commission job and it is for a family member. Today we are carding a custom blend of fiber for ultra sensitive skin and there is one type of wool that I know does not aggravate any sort of sensitive skin unless you're allergic to lanolin and that is Corma. So we're working with Corma fleece and then I'm adding in Angora from a friend's rabbit, silk, nylon, and faux cashmere. That should make the most delicious yarn and the end product is a flowy drapey cardigan with a hook. So that's all in a nutshell. Stay tuned to hear more. I will be doing detailed voiceovers for portions of this series and today's video part one is all about the drum carter. So without further ado, let's get started carding these fibers. All right, so I'm starting with fleece, Cormo fleece that I've previously washed and dried. And some of the bats, I sat there and picked a whole bunch of wool before carding, but on this one I didn't. So I'm picking as I go, which takes a really long time, but it works. Um, most of the time you're supposed to pre-card your fleece before you start putting in the add-ins, but I'm not doing that because Cormo is incredibly delicate, which is why I am going so slow. This is real speed right here. Um, I don't want the drum carter to, the teeth on the drum and the teeth on the liquor to put too much tension on the fibers and break them. So that's super, super slow for that reason. Once I get half the wool I've picked out um, onto the drum, then it's time to put in the add-ins and I'm only sticking them in the middle because that was super easy. So I started with Angora wool from a friend's rabbit and it's this beautiful light gray um, and it, it just goes so well with the fiber, with the Cormo and it's incredibly soft. Oh my gosh, I love Angora. Also, um, my drum carter is so fiddly, it doesn't like to do a lot of different types of fibers and the, just so many times I find myself struggling to keep the fibers off the liquor in. But this fiber, this Angora, wasn't that big of a battle, which was surprising and incredibly pleasant. So the finer teeth really do work well with the finer fibers. Um, I think my drum carter is a Howard brush. I think it's a 92 TPI, something like that. Anyway, next is um, aloe fiber, which I forgot to mention in the intro. And in hindsight, I would not use this fiber for this project if I were to do another blend like this because the aloe is short like cotton and it has been causing trouble for the rest of the project but it's okay. After the aloe, I'm putting in Silk Brick from Camage Fiber Arts, and then I will put in nylon and faux cashmere. The nylon and aloe came from Paradise Fibers, and the faux cashmere I got at Saf. I don't recommend um, putting your fiber in so haphazardly. Um, when you're painting onto the drum, it's much better to be slow and careful and try to get the fibers on there evenly and thin. I found as I was putting the bat strips back through the carter that 
even with the second time of carding, there were still large clumps of add-ins that I had to distribute in the third round of carding. So that being said, um, I have gray corma fleece that I've already picked and I am spreading it out some more on the feed-in tray and feeding it in, um, being fairly specific with where I want the fiber to go, although that is not necessary and I didn't always do this on all 21 bats. Now, one thing I don't like about a finer toothed drum carter is it's the fibers want to stay in the teeth. And I don't know if that's the brand of carter or if it's actual the, T, the TPI or if it's how the fibers go in. But with uh, the, the, the brain, brain moment, porcupine quill. The porcupine quill um, is flexible, it's soft. It gets in there and pulls the fibers out of the teeth without damaging the carding cloth, which you don't want that carding cloth damaged. It's very expensive and once damaged, you know, the teeth fall out, they don't grow back. <sighs> Sadly, I did not get any video footage of the second time around carding, but here's a little in progress clip that shows you Part of the stage I guess and how the bats changed as they were carded again. After all 21 bats were carded the second time I put them into three rows across the floor and took each bat and stripped them down and I put them in three different sections. So each row has its own box that I put them in and then in an attempt to stay organized I mix and matched from the three boxes to, with the intent to have each section of fiber in one bat. So I would end up with 21 bats. But then, as I was carding the third time, I scrapped that idea and decided to fill up the drum carter just as full as I could possibly get it. And I think I ended up with 18 or 19 bats. So that definitely made a difference. Um, filling up the drum carter all the way. When Often when you are working with fleece, it's better not to fill the drum up as full, but as you get the fibers more blended and more carded and smoother, you can fit more on the drum carter with less effort. So that's what I was doing. When I feed these in, I wanted to show you some detail of how I do this and this is the third round of carding um, so I have these narrow little strips and found that if I strip them even thinner it was easier to draft the idea here is to draft these out as thin as I possibly can so that there's no clumps and it, when I come across a big clump that doesn't want to draft I just remove it and I will paint that onto the drum later. But these strips, I will feed into the drum carter um, through the feed-in tray. And the reason I'm doing this method instead of spreading it out sideways and feeding it in, which you see in a lot of teaching videos, um, is because my drum carter will take a bat that's, that's spread out sideways and pull it in all wonky and weird and lumpy and it's so annoying and if I fight with it it all goes on the liquor drum so my drum carter just prefers this method and it works I'm happy with it and I can go really fast because this is super thin so right now you're seeing live speed but I'm going pretty slow because I'm trying to work around the tripod and it is not easy. My arm keeps wanting to bump into it and it's just, I'm also trying not to let my hand block the camera's view. So I am lifting the strips of fiber so that there's no tension as the drum carter is pulling it on because if there's tension on the fiber before it goes on the drum, it'll just wrap around the liquor in. And, uh, I am fully aware that my drum carter is dirty. There's tons of fiber on both liquor 
drums and it it desperately needs a good clean but when this project's all done then I will give her a good spa treatment so I think that's everything um, I am oh yes I forgot I did decide to add more Angora which I do in one or two places in each bat but that's it that's all the extra I'm doing so I hope you enjoyed today's video and thank you so much for joining me and hanging out with me while I do this huge carding job. If you would like to see more of these videos and not miss any of the series, please hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or if you want to see more detailed tutorial style videos, please leave that down in the comment section down below. I do enjoy very much hearing from you. And until next time, I hope you enjoy what you're doing.